Hello, it's John from the beautiful town of St Ives and today we're doing a Shopkeep Arty special. I'm going to be touring around the town. It's It's got so many galleries and initially I thought maybe we'd go into all the different galleries. You can see there's gallery after gallery on different shopping <laughs> streets. And there's also, if you go and hunt around the towns, you can find little galleries absolutely everywhere. But Shopkeep Arty is an artist channel it's for the artist so I thought if I could try and find little studios art studios where artists are painting uh, it would be a much more insightful time for you so that's what I'm going to do today I've got a few artist studios that I'm going to show you and hopefully we'll meet and talk with the artists themselves uh, and understand the background of why they paint what they paint what inspires them and things like that so it should be really exciting can't wait so uh, let's jump there now one thing's for sure, St Ives can get extremely busy and I'm here on 4th Street which is one of the main shopping streets here and there's a beautiful little alleyway here with a, a special little art gallery at the end that's featuring art by Chris Beasley and we're going to go and have a chat with him now so let's go. So this lovely little courtyard coming down to Chris Beasley's gallery uh, a lovely retreat but off a main thoroughfare so just what an artist wants as well as obviously a coffee shop opposite your studio let's go in there and here is Chris now with coffee in hand I see as Absolutely. well <laughs> how are you I'm good mate how are you yeah very well so how long have you been in this this it's a gallery and studio gallery isn't it studio so I will sit and paint here and uh, we exhibit the work and sell obviously originals and and the prints, and I advertise my teaching as well. So, as you know, I do teaching, so uh, watercolours outdoors, uh, painting holidays in, in St. Ives. So, that's all advertising done, done within here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, this is where I'm, I'm pretty Where you much base yourself. And, and, but you're not originally from no, St. Well, Ives? No, I'm from, uh, from Warrington in Cheshire. So, we moved down here last April, so April 2022. We had this gallery secured. Uh, yeah, something I've always wanted to do, to be fair, for a long, long time. Uh, because St. Ives is such a, a hub, isn't it? It's a, it's a mega for artists, basically. It's, uh, the light down here is tremendous. Uh, the inspiration as well around here, the, the, you know, the seascapes, the landscape, the sunsets are stunning. Uh, yeah. The wildlife, the, you know, the, the whole atmosphere of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, really appeals to artists definitely and i can see those are the sort of things that inspire you because you've got you've got a mix of landscapes some you know animal portraits I things like that self-portraits as well <laughs> yes <laughs> yes of course i can see that johnny <laughs> depp in you that johnny depp in you um and some yeah. of the waves the way you've captured the light in those waves are, are lovely i think when you're exposed to it daily you learn more about the, your environment and you do a lot of observation in that respect so yeah it's it's a lot easier to paint the ocean once you're down living by it than it is in inland somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so it's all about your environment, really. But yeah, certainly inspired by the ocean. I can sit there for hours just watching it and sketching it and, and trying to improve on it, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 And your preferred medium, because I think mostly it's oils. Is that right? With, with... Oils, I'm doing a lot of. And again, if you if you put me on a desert island, then yeah, I made me choose one. It would be oils. I've done oils for a very, very long time. Uh, but I've taught in watercolours, so I've taught watercolours for nearly 20 years. Acrylics, pastels, yeah. you name it, we've kind of done it. Uh, but yeah, oils. Oils is a good medium to actually use. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and this, this is this is what I'm using right now. So And that's St. Ives Harbour, I think, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely, so that's, uh, that's the harbour here. And that was uh, that took me up about three weeks to paint. Uh, but it's a small brush, I like details, so you know, you take your time with it. And the time doesn't matter really, it's mm. really being happy with the finished product at the end of the day rather than how long did it take. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, I've got to be satisfied with what it is. And, yeah. And that's, it's not good. Well, 
One of the things that we've uh, been talking about as well, and Chris mentioned the fact that he has done uh, teaching uh, for a while, is we may also feature Chris on our channel. So um, that is <laughs> uh, coming into shot as well. Um, so uh, so that's look out for that on our upcoming events because uh, what I'd like to do maybe is do a four part series with Chris uh, on oils over the course of a month, and I know one of our patrons Lenore who's always saying can we have more oils um I think she'll be very happy about that if we do that so uh, we just make one person happy that's fine <laughs> exactly exactly so uh, for you Lenore we might do it in uh, oils if you want to come and see more of Chris's artworks he's actually online on Facebook and you can visit him on Chris Beasley Studio Gallery that's his channel on Facebook so hunt him out um, but on to the next studio now let's let's go so here we are up a back street and you can see behind me it's a collection of artist studios and what I'm gonna do is uh, go up there and we'll introduce you to some of the artists that work there on a daily basis and some of the art that they're creating should be fun I love these tucked away studios. Let's see what we find out here. To be honest, I've already been down here and I know who's down here, so it's not too much of a surprise for me, but we'll come around here. And here we have Mary, hello, Mary. Hello, oh. hi, hi. So just knocking my pictures. Yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Yeah. So, so uh, yes, yeah, so this is your art studio, and um, you are mostly acrylic. Is that right? No, no, no. oils. Acrylic underneath usually, ah. just to get something hard to scratch into later on when I layer up with oil and coal wax. Um, rock powder, pigment, you name it, it goes on there. What I'm trying to do is get a sense of ancient geological time in my work. I was a geologist a long time ago. Um, and so for me, it's creating something that has an authentic feel of the, the rocks of the coast and other wild places that I, I walk in. So a lot of it's based on, on my walks in, on, you know, in, in mountainous and, and coastal areas. And as I understand it, when we have a chat, you kind of do it a lot with all your layering. You put on lots of different loads, layers. Loads of layers. So these ones are new starts. I started them yesterday. So literally just putting acrylic paint and marks on there. I don't know how these will end up because what's going to happen next is a bit more acrylic. And then I'll switch over to the oil. And that's when the layering starts. So layering up, scratching back, removing, adding a process that goes on over many weeks of, of adding and subtracting and build, building up to a texture that you know I, I, I like and I think I think works. And you were talking about you sand them down on each? Yeah, and usually with the acrylic layers I sand back. I do yeah. a little bit of sanding just to reveal some stuff. Um, you see here we've got some little, little marks showing through that weren't showing originally, so so that's what the sanding does it it creates a sense of rich texture but then once you put the oil on you can't really sand that um it's too soft it clogs up the sander so then that's when the scraping back happens with palette knives with with larger tools i'll show you a few a few of the large tools that start to come into play with this kind of thing coming up from oh wow yeah very large tools he heavy duty stuff talking masonry heavy. type yeah we are we are and it depends on the scale of the work as well so if it's a large work like these these ones here were on on canvas mm. um i was working on large pieces of canvas and, and this is the biggest scale i've gone to um, and then you really can get stuck in with some of the masonry tools and um, dragging the paint around, scraping it off, putting it back on, rolling pigment in, rolling rock powder in. I mean, I love putting rock powder in because it gives, you know, you're putting hundreds of millions of years of geological history into the work. Yeah. And that, and that kind of matters to me. It's, it's about creating that, that, authentic, that authentic sense with an authentic palette. So a lot of my, a lot of my pigments here in in pigment pots and these empty jars were 
were a lot powder from Bristol University ah, Sciences okay. Department. I've got oh, right. people there who give me give me um, rock powder when I need it. Oh, that's um, brilliant. Which is brilliant. Um, and you obviously yeah. understand all your rock powder with I, your I do, geological I, I do, background. But I, don't touch, I don't try to be too purist about it, so I don't necessarily try to match up the rock powder with the location of the painting. Um, and so let's pick yeah. one painting that you can uh, yeah. maybe talk about a bit of the history of how it, you know what inspired you with it. Well, which one should we look at? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> well, let's go with, with with this light one here. Okay. Actually. Okay. Um, that was part of a light series of paintings where I wanted to experiment with the feeling of creating light with paint. Um, it's got pale blues in there alongside the white and, and the beiges. But they were really inspired by the rocks um, of Gwythien up the coast near Godrevi, near the lighthouse. Yeah. So hence bringing the, 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 the light concept into it as well. And what I did there was built up a lot of layers of dark acrylic paint. Um, a lot of scratching and sanding went on, a lot of mark making, and just repeating that process over a couple of weeks, um, and then going back in with the light oil paint, the light um, oil bars as well, and just putting that final, final layer or two on that creates a sense of light. And there was a whole series of these, both large and small, um, many of them are gone now, but um, that that sense of creating rich layers which for me evoke the age of the earth really and the age of the rocks that we're we're walking on or we're looking at yeah that's lovely i really want people to spend time with my paintings i don't think they're a quick fix or a quick hit you don't walk in and go wow it's a, it's not a, a simple clean um wow factor kind of thing yeah it's sitting with them and looking at the the depth of them looking at the marks looking at the curious things that go on and trying to almost peer back into into time i think that's a sign of a good painting isn't it where you know you, you don't want it to reveal itself immediately you no, want want something no. to reveal itself over time that you can digest and always and, and explore yes um, yeah and that that's that really comes across in your your artworks, which is lovely. Yeah. And have you have you lived in St Ives all your life, or no, how long no, have you? No, no, no. I moved. I moved down. I've been visiting St Ives a lot and doing a lot of painting here and exploring the coast. Um, but I moved down two years ago. Right. So I live at Carbis Bay. I walk into the studio along the coast path. And, oh, and look lovely. At I, you know, look at look at what I'm um, walking through. Um, and I spend a lot of time also travelling. I go further afield. I lead walking holidays in oh. mountainous areas. Oh, okay. That's... Just to spend time with the rocks as well as spend time with people. <laughs> yeah. I think you get on very well with one of our watercolour artists that we host a lot, good David Bellamy. He's been he's been around. He travelled the world. He's always got a story yes, of somewhere yeah, where he's yeah, been. Yeah. Um, no, that's that's really fascinating. Yeah. Well, how can people find you, Mary? What's your Instagram? Have you got an Instagram or a Facebook yes, or a website? website. Great. So if you want to check out Mary, maryscottartist.co.uk um, and maryscott underscore art, I think, at Instagram. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Maryscott underscore art. So go and have a look at her artwork. Uh, really fascinating place and uh, time to meet another artist. Thank you so much for your time, Mary. Thank you. Lovely to Take care. You. Bye. In the same Warren as we've just been, but downstairs, um, there's an artist here called Sally. Let's go and say hello to her now. Sally, hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. I'm John. Hello. Nice to meet you. And um, I can tell that you are a collage artist, acrylic collage. Yes, I basically use acrylic paints with, with the because um, I like them to dry quickly, but it's um, my work is all about texture, building up layers, lots of collage with papers which I collect and hoard and painted papers and it's building up layers um, and using a lot of things which uh, I've sort of I have a studio at home where I sort of keep all my collection of things that I use and um, I can see you've yeah. got a, a huge array I mean it's probably fair to say a mixed media yeah, bag. I can see the unison pastels on your unison pastels 
pastels. I've got sort of bags of papers. Oh, oh which, that is fantastic. Which I've painted and which get ripped up and used in books that I make, in the small paintings and in the large paintings. Um, and a lot of sort of texture pastes and also everything, anything and everything that seems to work at the time. Yeah. But my work is very much also in a very limited, subtle palette. It's these sort of blue grey colours. Um, and so it's got a very sort of, um, diff yeah, it's got a, a look to it that I think people recognise, even when it's different subject matter, whether it's abstract or whether it's more landscapey. Yeah. yeah, the thing I like about the mixed media, you can it, you can add that three dimensional quality, yes. literally the yes. three dimensional yes. quality, um, and and also it adds a certain historic because you can with the materials, the papers, the the materials yes. that you're using yeah. here, yeah. they can actually mean something personally to oh, you. Yes. Um, when we hosted a. Uh, a multimedia artist uh, in this context on our channel, Sylvia Paul. She had um, she used bus tickets from Tokyo yeah. and yeah. things like that. Things that sort of All meant sorts of things exactly you just collect and, and sort of forage. Yeah. But if I show you, I don't know if this works on on the camera. Um, this is this is quite a good example um, of a piece where I've used. These are actually vintage Japanese letters. And I've had customers come in and I've asked if they're able to read them for me, Japanese um, visitors that we've had. And apparently a lot of the time they can't. Interestingly, uh -huh. there's an old alphabet and there's a new one. Right. And some of these aren't so legible. That's actually the envelope from the letter, which has been opened out and displayed. There's music score. This is a ledger from uh, uh, an estate in Scotland, Kelso, dated 1857. So wow. that's a page out of there, playing cards, very old, pennies, I think it's 1902 or something. So all sorts of things come together, including, this is a snippet out of my godmother's um, letter, um, which she and my mum, my mum's 90, and Jean moved to America when she was newly married, married an American, and they write to each other every week. And so things like that, snippets of Jean's gorgeous handwriting, all sort of mean something. Yeah, and yeah. when you put it together, it's just a general design element. There's no sort of... Uh, yes. It's just getting a balance with yes. different materials, the honesty seed pods, shells and things, obviously, which are abundant here in St Ives. You've got as uh, <laughs> large a choice of shells as we want. Yeah, you're kind of using... You're incorporating things from nature. Yeah. Um, and you're displaying them in a way that is your artistic yes. style. And yes. then you've got things from other people. So you're using components from other people yeah. within your art, yeah. which is, is a really nice way of yeah. displaying things. Um, and I guess for people purchasing that then, they're taking that. And so long as they understand that connection, yes, absolutely. It's, it can be really, it's a story. Yes. It's nice to be able to explain to people, this is why it's lovely selling from my own studio. Yeah. Um, I have worked with galleries as well, which is lovely, but they don't get necessarily the background explanation as to what, you know, what happens. No, exactly. Um, They're just um, buying it for the yeah, visual. Exactly. Um, and for example, um, this grid, I, I work in a grid forma format a lot, and although it's got um, a layer of paint over it, so it's, it's quite sort of subtle, um, there's some... Again, these are my letters. My best friend, Sue, um, weirdly, um, who used to live in St Ives, Cambridge. <laughs> and oh, right. we write to each other. And she's a graphic artist. She's got lovely handwriting. Rubbish spelling, but lovely handwriting. And so Sue's letters get ripped up and put in as well. And it's that kind of explanation and background that kind of people really enjoy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it works really well. No, that's really lovely. Yeah. Well, it's been lovely to have a little snapshot visit with you. Thank you. And it's it's a fantastic and inspirational place. I think we'll we'll you've got to come and visit Sally when you're when you're down in Saint Ives. But if they can't visit for whatever yes. reason, if they're a, a yeah. long way away overseas, what's the best um, place? How can they how can okay. they reach you? Have you got the Instagram? Have, or? I, I, yeah, I do. I have a very good website which um, has all my framed paintings on it. 
um, uh, that's sannymccabe.co.uk, two C's, my spelling is M-A-C-C-A-B-E, Sammy McCabe. Um, but really the most interesting place if you're an Instagrammer is my Instagram page. Yes, so and so what's the... What's that's just Sally McCabe. Sally McCabe with oh, two C's. Two C's <laughs> and an A. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. You're and um, let's jump to the next place. Lovely. Before I go any further, um, Petra messaged me to say that I must try a cruffin. Uh, what's a cruffin? Well, a cruffin is a donutty style pastry, almost a croissant style pastry, but filled with jam and custard. They look totally overindulgent. I'm going to resist for the moment, but maybe a little bit later on in the holiday. Anyway, let's continue. So before we round up for this video, I wanted to stop by, uh, I said there weren't going to be any galleries, but this gallery is a special one because it's run by the St. Ives Society for Artists that's been going since 1927, I believe. And they've been in this building, which used to be a church uh, since 1945. So let's go in there now and see some of the artwork that they are displaying. It's a beautiful building and, uh, as I say, they've been in here since uh, 1945 displaying various artworks from their members. They've currently got about 80 members and they've got a, a wide range of different styles. If I just go round now and show you some of the artwork. Unfortunately, they've got some fluorescent lighting which it's making those strobe effects, but hopefully it's not too bad. And this particular painting here is by John Emmanuel, who has just been made an honorary member of the society and is 93 years of age. Amazing, long artistic life. They display some artworks from the local schools as well, which is fantastic. It's good to encourage the youth. Another lovely artist here, Seb West, who I've been, I've heard about, who's a local artist. Just to give you a, a feel of just one of the many hundreds of galleries that are around, but this one obviously supporting the members locally. So hopefully you enjoyed today's little preview of St Ives for Artists and um, as I now head down to edit this video um, and also then get to the beach. If you've got any comments on some of the artists that you'd like us to host or um, any of the artwork that you've seen today that's inspired you please do let me know. Until next time, goodbye!